Welcome back to Same Right Fashion Academy YouTube channel for another interesting tutorial. In this class, I'll be teaching you how to sew this beautiful pattern that manipulated gown. As you can see right there on the thumbnail, here you can see I combined two colors. So please stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. That of this tutorial, you need your basic gown uh, pattern. So this basic gown pattern is actually easy to make. So the only thing you need to do is to mark out your vertical lines. So I'm going to just run through what I did on this uh, pattern. So as you can see right here, my basic pattern gown, this is the shoulder. So you need to draft your basic pattern gown. From the shoulder, you take your chest measurements. My chest measurement is 9 inches. My bust point is 10.5. My waistline is 17. That is my front length or waistline. My hip line is 29. My knee line is 41. I came up 1, 2, 3, 4 for my knee. Finally, I'm using a length of uh, 48 inches as my length so you can go as long as you want so whatever desired length you want make sure you have it right on your pattern okay so that when we are cutting we we'll just add a seam allowance so this is for the height then for the width you need to make your full body pattern what I mean full body it's not half of it. We are making full from shoulder to shoulder. So from my shoulder to my shoulder measurement is 16. 15 inches. Yeah, as you can see, 15 inches right here. My neckline here is 3 by 3. That is 6 inches as a whole. 3 inches by width. Then my bust that is 2 inches. You can see this is my center front line. I measured my bust pan measurement. My bust pan from one nipple to another nipple is 7 inches. So that is how I got this. So my bust pan here is 2 inches. Of course, you know how to go about it. So you need your bust that alone. For that manipulated uh, dresses like this, especially for this one that has so many patterns, you need only your bust that, okay? So, I've marked out my waist. This is my waist divided by 2 from one end to the other. My waist divided by 2 is 19. My hip divided by 2 is 24. I now removed from this 24, I removed 3 inches from my knee line. So, my knee line. I have it at 21. So if I have to place this paper on fold, the normal way we do that, you'll be removing 1.5 on your knee line. So whatever you have here, that is what you are going to mark below it 21 as well. So if you don't know how to make a basic gown pattern, you can join us on Telegram. Okay, we have um, an ongoing gown series class all about gowns. So you can join the class. Click on the link below this video you have the link to the class, okay? So now we want to start up this particular tutorial. So we'll start it by making our necessary alterations. So the necessary alterations I want to make now is on the neckline. So from this, my three by three, I'll simply mark one inch, okay? That means I'm adding one more inch to my three by three. That is four inches. So I'll just add one more inch. And once I've added one more inch, I'll just come in this way because I just want to create the neckline. So the neckline, I'll just do, uh, keep my ruler straight, just fainted lines. So these fainted lines will just uh, serve as a guide for me. So that fainted line from the neck depth, I'll come down by 1.25. So at this 1.25, I'll just make a squared line connecting to the one inch. So you can see I just made a square to guide me to my actual neckline. 
So for my actual neckline right now, change my marker for you to understand what I'm actually going to do. So I will use my pattern ruler right here. I'm going to sit it on this line and on this line. So once I sit it, this is just neckline. You can create any pattern of neckline, but I just want to show you how I came about this particular line. Okay, for my neckline. So from this line, I'll go in by one and a half. This is it. I'll make my mark. Then once I've done that, I'll connect that one and a half on this line. I'll connect it to the one inch. Come down by another one inch. Finally, blend it. So that is the kind of neckline I want to work with. So neckline is by choice. You can make a rounded neckline. It's all your choice. So right now, we'll start patterning this dress. So to pattern this dress, from this mid arm hole, I'll just come down by one and a half, create my mark. Then I'll follow this line. I'll just use my discretion to follow this pointed edge of the neckline. Okay. So I'll just follow it a little bit. Then I'll come in here by one inch. So if I follow it a little bit, bit straight, let me look at what I'm doing. I'll just keep it straight. So marking lines, lines, lines. Just keep it straight. Come down from here. Come down by three inches and mark. Okay. Then go in by one inch and finally make your mark. So once you have done that, if you just follow what I did. But like I said, this design is your creativity. You can make or create any design of your choice. So you can see how I, I put my ruler to that point. I one and a half, I came down. I'll just go ahead and connect. Then I'll keep my ruler this way from that point and do what? Connect. So that gives me the first pattern. So this pattern, I'll call it one. Pattern one. So this pattern, you can create so many things. I've said it before and again and again. So I'll be using these lines, my waistline, my hip line, my knee line as a guide for the creation of my pattern. So now, the first thing I'm going to do now, I'll just start creating randomly. I'll just start creating randomly. Let me say, this is my waistline. I'll simply place my uh, pattern ruler this way, connect to my waistline. Then I'll place my pattern ruler again and point it towards the darts. Do you understand? So that is what I will do. I'll just do what? Point it towards the that. So this is all about creativity. So I'll just point it towards my boss that the boss that at this point. Can you see? So if I have done this, I've created pattern number two. All right, then we'll come over to pattern number three. For pattern number three, I'll be using my waistline as a guide. So my, from my waistline, I'll just come down from my waistline by one and a half and mark. So once I've uh, marked it, I will target from here to here two inches. Okay, so from here to here, I'm going to blend it into two inches. So this is what I will do. If my pattern ruler cannot get, give me what I want, I can freehand it. But I think it's giving me what I want. So you can see how I'm pushing my pattern ruler. Can you see that? Fine. So I connected it to the waist line. Can you see? So now I have pattern number three. So like I said, if you look at the thumbnail, you can see it's different designs. It can be zigzag. It can be anything. Then I will now have made four, number four. Now I want to make pattern number five. So to make pattern number five, I will come to the, from this waistline, which is 21, and hemline, which I measured from here to here as 21. I'll place my tape first, get the midpoint, this is my midpoint, I create the mark, then from each point I'll measure and get my midpoint and create my mark. 
So in other words, I'm trying to divide this into four equal parts. So once I've divided into four sections, one, two, three, four columns, then I'm going to do this. I'll come in with my straight ruler. I'll just place it this way, straight. Okay, it must not be straight. You can also make it curvy. So now, on this part, I believe you see what I did. From here to here, I connected two. So on this part, I will just come in with my pattern ruler, the curvy part of it. I will sit it because I'm targeting this point. So I'll sit it this way. Let me just show you what you can do. You can just sit it to blend to this line. Then, once you get to this line, you use the straight part of your ruler. Can you see? So we have a curve at this point. Okay, that is that. Then from this line, this other one, I'll just go ahead and do what? I will take it straight at first. Or because I want to make a curve, I want to create a curve that will run into the hip line this way. So like I said, you can freehand sometimes. So I just feel like freehanding this one because the way I want it curvy. So I can even go in by one inch this way and create this one. Can you see? So this is what we have. So now this is pattern number three. This is number four, five, and six. So this... Um, Patterns I've made for the front now. I have six of them. It can be seven, ten, eleven. The more you keep pieces it, that is work for you. But just make sure you'll be ready for work. So for me, I'm using two different fabric. I'm using two color colors of fabric. Two colors, not two different colors. Just two colors of fabric. This is one and a half yards, and this is one and a half yards. So this one and a half, one and a half yards. I'm going to combine them randomly on this pattern so the two are crepe fabric and it needs to be the same texture so if you are working on this it has to be the same texture don't use crepe i use duchess it will not work perfectly okay so make sure the fabric is the same texture so this is the two texture fabric i'm using and i have six patterns for the front so now i'm going to subdivide them according to my colors so, since I'm using black and cream, the first one, I will use black on it. The second one, I will use cream on it. The third one, I will use black on it. The fourth one, fourth one, I will use black on it. Because I want the two ends to be black and black. So, the end will also be black. The center is going to be cream. Can you see that? So here in front, we have cream for five and cream for two, four black for front. You can even use three fabric for this. If you are using red, you can use red, cream, black, red, black, black. It all depends on you. But for me, this is just what I want to do to demonstrate this tutorial. So now, the next thing you want to do, because uh, once we have cut out this pattern, it will be difficult for you to identify which one is for which one. So, we are going to create our marks accordingly right now. So, on each of these parts, on each of these parts that has the side like this, I'll write side. I'll write side side then I'm going to use max the for for those that matches each other I'm going to use max for them for example I'm going to join this and this so let me complete the side first side so I will know the part that is side this part is side can you see so we are done with marking out the side so I will, I will start this and this will be joined together. I'm going to use one stroke. Two and three will be joined together. I'll use two strokes. So when I cut this pattern out and see two strokes, I will know 
that this one is supposed to go to this because by the time i cut out one you will see this one stroke this way by the time i cut out this these two stroke goes this way so for three and four i'll use three strokes then for four and five i'll use four strokes five and six i'll use five strokes i believe you understand that so that makes it easy for us to join this pattern accordingly so once you are done with that next we are going to do is to cut and close up the bust that so now i'm going to first cut the side i'm cutting the side so make sure this is your actual measurement because in that manipulation especially for pattern that manipulation like this you don't need to add anything on fabric so it's purely pattern 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 it's purely pattern 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 so i'll just go into my armhole then i'll go into the neckline i'll get to the neckline this way So I have to cut this on camera because I actually need you to see what I'm doing very, very clearly. So you can see what I have right here. I've cut out the basic dress. This is the basic dress. Can you see? So the next thing I'll do now is to start separating. I'll separate pattern number one. So once I've separated number one, so when I'm going to join it now, simply you will see that this one and this one, I'll bring them together. Okay, so I'll separate one. Then close up your boss that. Okay. So you apply your adhesive, close up your boss that. So once you close up your bus start, this is what you are going to have. Can you see? So automatically it lays flat. Okay. Then I'll come this way. Then I will close up my bust that. So when you close your up your bust that this is what you will have. You have something like this pointing to the bust this way. Okay, so you just simply cut out this. All right, so this is what we have for pattern number two. Then for number three, I'll just go in here and cut out number three. Can you see? So you see three, you see two. So when I'm placing it, I will place them accordingly then i'll come over to pattern number four you can see 
pattern number five so this can use a you can have it as any shape it can be curvy it can be sharp it can be pointy so whichever way i will show you in this class how to join all of them can you see so now another thing is this max we have the knee line when making and um, cutting it on the pattern i'm going to create notches because we are going to match them notch by notch that's the only way we can sew and get this curvy part so now i will jump into the back pattern after which we start cutting see what i have right here so the neckline i have here is also three by three so three by one sorry for the back neckline is always three inches natural neckline three inches by one inch okay so but i wouldn't bother to mark it because we are going to make the neckline exactly how we made for the front by adding one in that is four by two so i'm using four by two for the back neckline so this four by two i'll simply connect it using a simple rounded neckline so just our simple round neckline okay so of course you know the lines i made here chest line back length you know the back length will be shorter by two inches note that from my shoulder for the front when i measured my shoulder for the front pattern we had our shoulder to the front uh, to the waist at 17. now two inches was my bust that so my back length is 15. so that means that your hip line is going to shorten by two inches for me my hip line this is my hip line my hip line for the front was 29. now i came up by one two so the knee line actually was 41 i came up by one two three four for the front i'm marked so since i've i marked at 37 i'll come up by one two for the back and mark then the length the length simply come up by two inches and mark that is how i got this length so i believe you understand that so i want you to understand this way then on the waistline zip bulge contour line from the center back this is center back is 0 0.75 i'll place my straight part of the ruler to the neckline this way to contour it to the hip this way to contour it so doing that then i've gotten my contour line so another thing i want you to note is that from this center back to this the tip of my pepper is Three inches so make sure you give that gap of three inches the reason is because of our overlap so this is my knee line and I'm actually going to make my overlap exactly on the knee line okay <clears throat> so I'll take it this is over lap <coughs> so now from here on the knee for the bomb illusion, I'll come in by 0 0.5. I'll place my pattern ruler this way. That is to give it that bomb shape. Bomb shape. You can see it. And then it will go all the way to the overlap. So when I'm cutting now, I'll cut it this way. So now, another thing we are going to do is replacement. We are replacing this contour line. So just simply come here and add the 0 0.5 you are going to cut out because you are cutting out this 0 0.75 I'll mark. From here, you can just place your tape here and remeasure your bust divide by 4. Okay, you can also place your tape here and remeasure your waist divide by 4. Then you do what? You connect it. That is to avoid... Um, shortage then for here you can see it was to nothing so since it was to nothing just simply place your 
pattern ruler from there to nothing. Can you see? Then another thing you'll be wondering is we came in by half an inch. Won't we replace the half an inch? No. Don't replace it. It will give that back part a good contour bomb illusion. Okay? So it's okay and perfect this way. So another thing is if you want to use plain black from top to bottom, you can use. But if you want to separate it, you can also separate. So for me, I want the center to be um, cream. That's the center. Both two center lines will be cream. Where we we'll have the zipper. Then this side, you know, the for the front, the side side was black. So I still want to have that black effect here. So to create that black effect, simply come to the hem and measure what you have here get the midpoint so this is my midpoint so this is my midpoint it depends on where you want the black i might decide to make my black to from here I might, it just dep depends on what you are creating so i just want to create something like this and take it to the hem i believe you understand something like this so, from that waistline, I'll just have something like this. So, I just want to define the line. That's what I'm doing. I just want to define the line. Then I'll just go this way and go this way. So, now that means that black, I'll use black on this side and use cream on this side. So when you are that manipulating, try and be creative. Try and be creative, okay? So for the sides, it's good to have a, use a dark color. So in case you are working with dark and light color, just like I have black and cream, it's usually good to have cream at the towards the center back and black on the side at all times. But like I said, it's all by choice. So I will go ahead and cut this pattern because we are done. The back is actually not difficult. So I will go ahead and cut. So for the sleeve, when we get to the sleeve, we will choose what color of sleeve we want to use when we get there so when we get there we we'll also see it so i'll now cut through my back contour because we have replaced everything then once you come this way you go to the bomb illusion and do what and cut out this is the overlap so the overlap is actually two inches so i'll simply cut out measure out the two inches because what we have here from this point is too much so i'll just make it two and a half which is two inches from this line okay so i'll just cut it off so whatever However you want your dress to look like, you will do it right on the pattern. So I'll just go ahead and... So we are done. Now I'm going to also mark, mark the side. And I'll mark a stroke because it's just one pattern piece. I'm working with for the back. So I'll just go ahead and do what. So that's fine. And we are done. So now I'll be cutting all of this on my fabric. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay, for us to start cutting, make sure your fabric is the same texture. And also place your pattern on the right side. So here I place my pattern and I'm making notches to them. I added 0.5 inch all around. The pointy edges, you can see I squared them up. 
I added one inch seam allowance on the side for each of them. So make sure you make notches on the parts I'm making right now on the hip. Any line that got, gets to the waist or hip, just make notches to them. So the black part, you can see, I'm placing my patterns on top of them accordingly. So you have to place it the way I'm placing it on the hem edge. And then add your 0 0.5 seam allowance all around. On the part I wrote this side, you have so we'll start our joining from number one, which is black. So this number one, which I have as black, here you can see the pointy part. I told you to cut it as a square edge, okay? So the rest of it, I added 0 0.5 inch all around the neckline and all that. So the next I will bring is number two. So this is it, number two. And number two, we are going to sew it right into here. So to sew this very, very perfectly, we are going to sew inclusive of what we have on the pattern. So it's only when we are done joining it, we can take off the pattern. So how are we going to do that? First, I will make a notch this way to the end of this. So make sure you make a notch to the end of it. And then I'm going to pick up my pattern right now, the way it is. And I'm going to, okay, since you have made notch, you know it's at the bust point we made notch. So this is my bust point. So if you want to take off your pattern, you can now take it off. We have our notches right there. So I'll just take off my pattern, okay? For ease of sewing. Just simply take off the pattern for ease of sewing after making your notches. So I'm taking off all my pins, my patterns, and I'll go over and stitch. So you can see here I have ease of sewing. So the bust point notch, I'll just pin in a way I can sew. I'm sewing on top of my pin directly. And then this is where we created the notch. So I'll just go ahead and pin. In fact, as I turn it, I don't even need to pin again. As I'm sewing at 0 0.5 inch, it will terminate somewhere here. Then I'll pick up this and continue it, okay? So first I'll go back to my machine. And I'm going to match what I have here. So this is what I'm doing at the machine. Because I might not actually show what I'm doing. So, but this is what you will do before you jump into sewing. So you can hold it down with your pin. So by the time you go in sewing, it will be easy for you. So I'll just secure this part. I'm going to stitch at 0 0.5. So once I get here, since I've already created this notch, I'll keep matching it like you're sewing a princess uh, that armhole. I'll sew it till I stop at 0 0.5. Let me do that. I've joined the first. Can you see that? So make sure the notch is always at the notch. And once you sew, you can see where I stopped my sewing, just where I had the cut. All right, so the next I will do is to pick up the notch here and match it up with the notch here. So that's why I told you about the notch, very important. Then I'll also start from beginning. So always start from the beginning. So at the end of the day, you finish it up neatly and nicely. So I'll go over to my machine now. I'll still sew at half an inch. So once I'm sewing, the square edge and the notch edge, automatically they will meet each other at the sharp point. Can you see? So this is what you have, the 0 0.5 in this way, and it gives you that sharp edge. So as I'm holding it here, you can see we all already have the sharp edge. Can you see that? So by the time we give it a good press, it relaxes nice and flat. So let me do that. So now I'm done joining one and two. So you need to make this part relax. 
So after sewing it, this is what you have. So simply make another notch at that point. This notch I'm making, you have to be take it easy. This is to ease that part, to ease that part when ironing. So we just make notch to ease that part. So by the time you ease it and iron that part, it relaxes nice and flat for you. So by the time I give it a good press, that part will definitely relax, okay? So I will go over to the next one, which is number three. So I'll check on my pattern and here comes number three for the front. So number three for the front, you can also see it has a pointy part. So normally you just go ahead and do what make open up that part, okay? Why you have the squared edge. Take off your pattern. So I want to point out something for you on this number three and number two. Before you join them, make sure you place your notch on the waistline. Can you see? I place my notch on this line, which is the waistline. So I just want to point it out for ease of joining. So I'll just go ahead and match that part, which is the waistline. So make sure the notch, you have the, that at the notch. Then you secure with your pin. Then I will go from here. For this one, I'll sew from the bigger part right now. So I'm going to sew, arrange with my pin as, as usual. Then I'll go ahead and sew, okay? I'll sew from here to this pointy part. So once I get there, I'll also pin from the beginning here and sew from here. Just the same process. That's what I'll repeat now. So now I've joined number four, number three. So the next I will join now is number four. So if you see number four, I'll just bring them number four, number five, and number six. We are going to join them in a systematic way. Okay, so now we are going to join, I'll take off one and two and three, which I've done, and we are going to join first four and five, and letter five and six, then after which we'll now place number three and join to the whole of this, so that's how we are going to do it. So make sure you make your notches, can you see the notches? So I'm going to follow the notches I made now and make sure I join them to the end. Then they will come as one piece, four, five, and six. Then we'll join it to the one, two, and three. I've joined four, five, and six. So this is what the back looks like. This part is actually very easy to join. So I will advise since it has curvy parts, just make your notches at interval. Then go ahead and give it a good press. But for me, I'm going to press everything after I'm done joining. So you can also press them one after the other. It all depends if you have the time to press them one after the other. So making all the notches, next is to do what? Join this to this. So I'll just start from the end to join. If you look at my end, you can see I have the same allowance on a squared part. So at this squared part, I'll leave this square part and start up my joining from here, from the squared part. I'll start joining it from here, okay? And I will run it to the end. Let me do this. Right now, I'm done joining the front pieces and we want to move over to the back pieces right now. So after joining them, this is what you are going to have at the end of the day, okay? So that's why I told you I needed the black part on the side and the cream part on the center piece. So the next thing I will do now, before I join the center, I need to create the facing. So my facing, I come up with my fabric on fold, as you can see. So I'll just place my fabric. So the fabric, make sure it has two inches 
at this point. So I will pin it now. I'll secure it with my pin and then I'm going to cut out the neck line. So make sure you pin it down because this fabric can actually wobble. So I'll hold, use my hand and hold it down. I have two of them for the two facing. So I'll just go ahead and cut out the shoulder line and trim off this part. So once I take it off, it's already rounded. But if you want it more rounded, you can go ahead and measure what you have here, two, two inches. I'll just start from here, two inches, two inches. So I'll just be marking two, two inches because I want it rounded. I'll just be marking two inches. Can you see? So that becomes the facing. So I'll quickly come in and I'm going to pick one of one after the other right side to the right side. So I'll go over to the machine now. I'm going to stitch 0 0.5 top stitch. Front facing because uh, the front facing is asymmetrical. So I'll just use the pattern to create it. So you can see I'm placing it at 2, two inches. So you have to place at 2, two inches this way following exactly the same shape of neckline. Can you see that? So I'll just go ahead and mark it out here. So since I'm done with this pattern, that's why you see me do what I do here now. So you need to finish joining before you create the facing. So here, my facing will go like this and cut like this. So I'll quickly cut it out and go over and place it. Make sure when you are placing it on the fabric, place it on the right side too. You know how we have been doing that. So this is the facing. Let me cut it now. Cut out this facing right now. I placed it on my fabric and added my seam allowances. I'll go to my machine now then place it this way. Okay. So I'll place it this way and stitch so once i stitch out of stitch give them my uh, notches turn it and give it a good press so i'm done sewing my zip and i was about giving it a good press with the facing okay i top stitch the facing as well so i want to show you what is i'm going to do at this overlap so for the overlap you can see I stitch uh, 1 inch and 0 0.5. I'll just come in here and make a diagonal notch. So be careful you don't cut through it. So this notch will help the overlap to lay nice and flat. So as I'm ironing now, I'll keep opening the seams this way. So once I get here, this one will be on its own. This will be like this and I'll lay it at any part I want to overlap, then run a straight stitch to hold it down. So that is what I'm going to do. So after which, if I'm working on this, I'll also run a stitch to hold it. Right. So I've given everything a good press, both the back and the front. And here I have marked out my one one inch, which I'm going to sew this dress with. So I'll just come in and this is the front i've given it a good press so you have to open up the seams the way i did now here and iron them out so once that is done you mark out your one one inch seam allowance make sure you take your measurement of your bust your waist again okay so whatever seam allowance that is remaining you share it on both sides that is exactly what i did to get this so I'll go back to my machine now and I'll place this to this and I'll follow this stitching line and so close up the sides. 
then coming over to the shoulder seam line i always like to do this i'll bring in the one i have of course that is the what i'm going to do now to finish up the neckline so i'll make sure i align everything back either the back or the front whichever one i'll place it right very close to the seam and turn it this way arrange everything arrange everything and i'll sew at 0 0.5 i will do that i'll finish up the sides give them a good press then sew my basic sleeve to it out so this is my basic sleeve and i've added one inch seam allowance on this side so i just make my notch to identify the grain line and the front piece i'll go back to the machine now i'm going to close up the sides as usual and then i will sew it to the bodies and we are done right so i'm done sewing the basic sleeve so you can attach any sleeve of your choice as you can see so i'll now go ahead and search the inner part of this dress and we are done okay so this is what the back looks like and you can see the overlap so thank you very much for coming to this tutorial once again if you are new to this channel please kindly subscribe turn on your notification bell to receive videos like this every day like this video share to family and friends drop your comment on the comment section and your suggestions as well thank you once again see you in the next class bye